Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining the Florida Center for Students with Unique Abilities February webinar, Project TOPS, Transitions to Post-Secondary Institutions, Florida Post-Secondary Comprehensive Transition Program Development and Structure at Robert Morgan Educational Center and Technical College. My name is Drew Andrews. I am the Assistant Director and Technical Assistance Coordinator here at the Florida Center for Students with Unique Abilities at the University of Central Florida. Our presenter today is Dr. Vivian Vieta. She's the Project Director with Project TOPS. This webinar is being recorded and will be posted on our website under the Events tab for your review on a later date or to share with someone who is unable to attend. Handouts of the PowerPoint can be downloaded from the chat section, which can be accessed by clicking on the chat icon. And if you take your cursor and move to the bottom of the Zoom window, a group of icons will show up and you'll see a little chat cloud there. If you click that, the chat box will open and you'll see over on the right that there are phone numbers that you can call in to listen to the webinar if you have if you're having difficulty with your um, awesome. the volume on your laptop and there's also mm -hmm. the website the um, PowerPoint for you to download. Um, at the end of the webinar, you will be directed to our evaluation. Please complete so we will have your input when planning future webinars. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Vivian Fietta. Thank you, Drew, very much. Thank you to all the participants and definitely the team from uh, Unique Abilities. I'm joined here with Ada Bogart. Good afternoon, our, everybody. Our TOPS coordinator, and we have another uh, facilitator on a call as well. Ms. Maddie Rodriguez-Walling is part of our team, a very important part of our team. So thank you very much. And I'm going to share my screen now and you will be able to see the PowerPoint. Thank you, Claudia, for uh, uploading it. I see the link on the chat component so everyone can download the PowerPoint on a PDF version. Okay, does everyone um, see my screen? Drew? Yes. Okay, Perfect. so we're ready to start and you have access to this. So we're gonna go through it with the PowerPoint really as talking points for us. And we wanna start where the heart is of everything, which is our students. And this logo was designed by three students when we first started to conduct interviews for students as candidates for Project Tops. And I'll explain that in a bit. Um, the students describe the journey of being at a technical college as climbing, climbing a hill, climbing a mountain, um, climbing stairs, and they wanted to reach the top. The top was their professional goals and, and their careers, and it was an adventure for them. Um, so the yes at the top symbolizes our students. The mission of Project Tops is to support students with unique abilities, students with in the autism spectrum and intellectual disabilities who are enrolled in a post-secondary program at the technical college level. How we started our journey was really the vision of one of our assistant superintendents. Um, he was the one who reached out and wanted to receive additional funds and found the grant that was being offered by FDDC. I know that Mr. Rick Lockenbach is on the call today and anyone who is not familiar with FDDC, we strongly encourage you to explore their website, um, look at any other requests for proposals that they might have available. That's how TOPS was born through a one year grant with FDDC that we are very grateful has been renewed and this is year five of our grant. Um, we also collaborate, obviously, with the Florida Center for Students with Unique Abilities, Dade County Public Schools, School Operations, and Adult Ed, and everything is housed directly at Robert Morgan Educational Center and Technical College. Robert Morgan was selected um, because based on the language in the first original grant from FDDC, it looked at the types of students we were serving, the number of programs, and where we were located in the community. It was a rural part of the county um, with a high Hispanic population. And Project Tops was the first career technical model in Dade County Public Schools. We have to say that every post-secondary program, whether it's 
public or private based, anything that's being offered for students with special needs is welcomed and very much needed, not just in Miami-Dade County, but um, I, I dare say across the country. Our personal timeline, year one, began in 2015, October 2015, and it was the grant from FTDC with a 33% match from our district. And what that covered was my position as the program director, hourly, uh, hourly funds for teachers, supplies and travel. That continued and we were renewed year two, three, four, until now. Um, it was in year three when we applied for the FPCTP enhancement grant, and that allowed us to have 100% funding for Ms. Bogarts, our TOPS coordinator. Quite happy to have her on board. Up until then, year one and two, I was the only full-time staff member of Project TOPS. So that if that sounds kind of hectic, it was, um, but we did it because I had amazing support from counselors and administration and the teachers that were hired, uh, hired hourly. Um, those teachers worked in the after school hours and they provided individual or pro support to our students who stayed after their program. We completed two years of the enhancement grant and have since reapplied to extend for two additional years. Um, within that time, we did apply for federal um, CPT status. And in order to make that happen, we worked really closely with our financial aid lead person, as well as our business manager. In some of the technical colleges, colleges or universities, um, the scholarships and the grant is run through financial aid office. For us at Robert Morgan, it's done through our business manager and she's outstanding in everything from the scholarship disbursements to the grant to, to anything that needs to be done or, or ordered for our students is done through the business manager. Um, that was just an internal decision that, that we made. So in terms of TOPS enrollment, you have a chart here for you to see. We began with FDDC and throughout that first year had a total of 19 students. Year two, 28. Year three, 31. And that was like one too many, seriously, based on student needs. Um, but we began now looking at the students in terms of students within the autism spectrum and students with intellectual disabilities or unique abilities. So our first year with unique abilities, we had eight scholarships that we awarded to students. The next year was 29 students within the autism spectrum and eight students, um, unique abilities, 24 and five. And then next year, we know that we're covered with unique abilities until 20, June, 2021. We don't know about FDDC at this point. It's, it's on a yearly basis. So I know that our numbers will continue to grow. We are not projecting those 24 students that we have now all to be program completers or finishing by next year. So it's a step-by-step -step process. The, the journey definitely continues for us. So focusing now on unique abilities and the scholarships, um, year one, eight students, year two, eight students, we had three students who finished in the whole program um, and were program completers, and we currently have five students right now. All the students, we are quite proud to say, all of them completed their CTP program and earned the maximum mm -hmm. occupational completion points or OCPs in those programs, except for one student. And that student um, started really strong, was very self-determined, but he really was asking for a program which was baking and pastry based on his parents' request and what mom and dad wanted him to be involved in and not what where he wanted to be. So that wasn't really a good fit for him. And he was the one student who decided to leave after one trimester, did not earn an OCP, um, talked about relocating and, and studying another program, but never did. To, to the last of our knowledge, he was working part-time in the food industry, ironically enough, um, but had not continued to study, even though he really did have a lot of potential. So the project tops eligibility criteria, and this holds true for all students, students with um, unique abilities or students within the autism spectrum are listed on the slide. The number one thing is that a student has to self-disclose their disability, and they can do this in any one of a number of ways. Um, you know, we, we're not 
based on the formality of coming in and saying, you know, I have an intellectual disability, or this is, you know, what I call myself. It's more about, I need assistance. I have a disability. I have unique learning needs. In school, I received. They can disclose in any one of a number of ways. Um, what we find and we'll address a little bit later on is that sometimes parents want to self-disclose for students. And we really encourage the student's voice from day one, from meeting one, when they come and they tour with us, we want to hear the student's words and how they describe their learning needs, um, their interests, their likes, their dislikes, and their goals. Um, some of our students are straight from graduated from high school. So the maturity level is not always there. Um, some students can be freshly graduated and be very self-determined and tell you exactly what they see for themselves and other students fall in between. We have students ranging in ages from 18 to 26. Many of our students have gone to technical, uh, I'm sorry, community colleges like Miami-Dade County um, Community College and have not achieved success. And then they come to us at Robert Morgan. So they're not quite sure if it's gonna be similar to their Miami-Dade experience. Um, or, or what, so it's, it's a hard transition at the beginning. But what we found across the board is that students with unique abilities were already registered at Robert Morgan before Project Top Start. So one of the questions we, we receive very often is, um, how do you go out into the community and recruit? And there hasn't really been a need to recruit because the students have either been on campus, already registered, or the students are coming to us through other means of referrals. The two areas that I wanna highlight on this slide before we move on is, well, actually three. We need to make sure that there is an identified interest to the CTE program. We wanna avoid a student coming simply because of the program top supports. We wanna make sure that that student has a connection to what they want to study. Um, we also wanna make sure that the student is able to perform independently. We have accepted and have students performing very well that came from settings where they were receiving one-on-one -on -one support. And now we know that doesn't exist at a community college or at a technical college. So the student has to be able to perform independently, be able to access transportation, provide self-care for themselves. Um, we provide a lot of support but the student needs to be able to begin with independence. And we try to foster and increase that independence because the ultimate goal is that our students can go into the job market and perform independently. So if they're not performing independently here when they start, um, that, is, that is a concern and an indicator for us. The process for us is an interview that begins with a counselor and then the teachers are involved, the teachers of the programs that we support Ms. Bogarts is the coordinator and myself, and it's a complete team approach because we all bring something different to what we're looking at and observing. Mm -hmm. So this is the eligibility criteria for all our students. So how do we award the FTP scholarships? Um, I cannot thank and, and give enough kudos to the team at Unique Abilities because their instructions and the resources that they provide on their website really keep, keep us on point. Um, so we follow the process, and this is a link directly to the post-secondary institutions tab with all the steps that need to be done. What we did when we first started was, as a team, we developed a scholarship review committee, and that consisted of one of our administrators, our assistant principal, Ms. Erica Caldwell-Clinch, um, the counselor who monitored the programs that we served, the CTE instructor, and we requested that a VR representative. At one point, it was a VR consultant, then it became a VR um, supervisor from one of our local offices to sit and look at the documents. The most com important component for us in all of this is the next sentence that's underlined, to review all the available documents for the students. And the reason for that is we have run across cases where um, Ms. Bogarts and myself based on an interview with a student, you know, feel that the student has more needs, maybe more academic or um, cognitive needs, and the documents that we're reading are saying the student has a learning disability. So that would make the student not eligible for unique abilities or for the scholarship program. And we need the documentation to match what we're seeing. So all it takes is a little bit of um, extra questions to the parents um, in terms of 
Can you bring us an IEP from the school system? Can you bring us any type of documents if the student was in a private setting? Maybe you have the first evaluation that was ever conducted. Are there any medical conditions or any medical um, traumas that happened early on in the young adult's life that you can share with us to give us a full picture? Um, and that's when you start connecting all the dots and we receive it. That's the really important for us to make sure that any student that can be served is served. Um, the scholarship components to maintain the scholarship are very clear. Earn satisfactory academic progress. I think all the technical colleges and community colleges and universities have that in common. Maintaining consistent attendance and with attendance comes being punctual, um, whether you're on credit hours or um, credit points, whichever it is. Um, we run by trimesters at Robert Morgan. So we run from August to December is the first trimester, then January to April is the second trimester, and then final trimester is April through the end of July. Um, adhering to the student code of conduct, it is the same code of student code of conduct for all Miami-Dade County adult technical college students. So we really have not modified anything. We just provide our students access to everything um, and we make sure that we support them, but they follow the SAP, the attendance and the code of conduct for any other student enrolled in a technical college program. And that SAP, in case anyone has any questions, is a straight C average um, with all the supports that we offer, the accommodations, um, the after school hours, there's really no reason that any student would have a C or a low C average. So if we start to see a student even coming close to a C, we know that we need to have a conference with the student, meet with the teacher one on one. Um, usually we invite the parents to come in as well. And if that C continues, the student is placed on a probationary contract by us as the TOPS team because they need that C. Okay, any questions or comments so far? You want me to keep going on and then questions at the end? Okay, if I don't hear anything and I'm not, I can't see the, ch the chat component because I'm on full screen. So Drew, let me know yes, if there's that anything. Will be, that about. will be fine. We'll take, I don't see any questions in the chat box and we will be, there will be a time at the end to take questions. Okay, perfect. Okay, so moving forward, process for potential students and why we include this part is we have students who may come into the campus that are not asking for project tops, that are not asking for Ms. Bogarts or myself, that are not self-disclosing anything. And later on, we find out, oh wait, this is a student that might've been eligible as a student within the autism spectrum or a student with a unique ability. So it may happen with a counselor. Um, it may happen with a teacher when the student becomes really familiar with the teacher and more comfortable and says, listen, I'm not, I'm not getting everything I need, I need more help. And the help becomes to, well, in high school I used to receive or I kind of need, and the story starts to unfold. Sometimes the student doesn't self-disclose, but the parent will come in and self-disclose for the student. We can't emphasize enough. We're teaching adult students. We need to hold them accountable. We need to teach them how to be accountable. And, and we have to be consistent about self-disclosing to accept the assist, assistance that we provide. Um, the way that we do that is through daily collaboration with everyone that we come in contact with. That is totally an open door policy with our administrators, both at the district um, and school site level, our counselors and the teachers. The teachers that we work with are an integral part of this team because without them, they're, they're masters at their craft. We're providing the expertise in accommodations, in developing things that may not exist, we create them. Our team is very creative on that part. And that's exactly how I think our students are being success successful because we're able to do that for them. If a student is in the school enrolled and not um, self-disclosing, but not in one of the programs that we serve, then we can collaborate with the counselor or the teacher, but they're not considered a project top student and they're not receiving, they're not eligible to receive the scholarships. So the question you should be asking is, well, what are the programs that you do serve? And these are the programs, baking and pastry arts, commercial foods and culinary, that was the name during year two and three 
of Project Tops. We no longer support that. We don't have any students enrolled there. Um, and it really lack of manpower right now. We can't divide up ourselves anymore to be in, in more mm -hmm. places at the same time. We do cover 3D animation technology and commercial art technology. So the pictures shown here is one portion of the kitchen, actually a third of the kitchen where the baking takes place. The kitchen is a commercial professional kitchen that is divided into three sections. We share it with three chefs. We have a high school chef for our high school students because the Robert Morgan campuses has a high school and a technical college. Um, the second part is the culinary arts and there's another chef for that. And then the chef that we work with, Chef Antonio Sarbaji, is in charge of baking. And that's the section that you see there. The second picture um, with a border in red um, is where we have 3D animation technology and commercial art technology. And the instructor is Mr. Tim Martin. And he as well conducts classes for high school students at the same time that we have our technical college students and our top students. Um, high school and the technical college students do not mix. They sit in separate areas of the class and you'll see some more pictures later on, but it is a lot of balancing, a lot of organization on the part of the, the team that we support. Um, and these are the three programs that our top students are eligible to apply for. Everything that we do is based on the FDOE curriculum frameworks, both for Steph Starvaji and Mr. Martin. So I gave you, I shared with you all the link and this is where we run it. Obviously, if a student came in 17, 18, you know, we're following those curriculum frameworks. Sometimes the frameworks have differences. Um, but the reason why we showed this is sometimes we receive the question, what certificates have you developed at Robert Morgan? We have not developed any specific certificates for our students. Our students um, are in a fully inclusive career technical model. That's how we started the program and that's how it's remained. So we implement our strategies through support facilitation and co-teaching terms that are typically used through um, K-12. And it's what we're doing, it's what works for our students. So the support facilitation is basically, you know, collaborating with the teacher and being in the class, but ne not necessarily um, interjecting in the instruction. Um, whereas co-teaching, we're really equal partners in the class and the teacher is always the, um, the guru of the content area, baking and pastry, commercial art, design, graphics, animations, but we become the gurus of how to take a concept that a student is not understanding and making it understandable for the student. Our team of facilitators, Ms. Walling, who's on the call, um, and our team that stays after school and after school for us is anywhere from one o'clock to 4.30 are masters of providing individualization to our students. So what is the student not getting? What do they need? An example, in commercial art, we have the textbook hard copy that Ms. Bogart is great at coordinating order, having it through our bookstore, the student can purchase it, usually purchase through VR, but also having a copy of that textbook in PDF format on the computer for the student. And then we have created everything from study guides, outlines, podcasts, videos, tutorials that have been developed by our team, not something that we fought through a publisher or a third party because we're basing it on what our students need and what concepts they're not getting. Um, and that I think is the most important part of what we create for our students is those accommodations. We are responsible for developing the 504 and the matrix level of funding for each student. We share that with the counselors. Um, it's documented in our internal database system as well as the teachers, but we're collaborating with those teachers on a daily basis. It's not about going to visit the teachers and seeing how they're doing. Either Ms. Bogarts or myself or Ms. Walling are with one of those two CTE instructors on a daily basis. Um, we do provide support services to our students in the classes during the day and in the evening. For the past five years, um, Ms. Bogarts has been a part of the evening team and we have one more facilitator who comes in the evening. So our classes during the day are eight to two o'clock for commercial art and 3D eight to one for baking. And in the evening, 
commercial art and 3D is offered again, 6 p.m. to 10.15, Monday through Thursday. During the day, it's Monday through Friday. Um, we refer to case management a lot, mm -hmm. and the examples of case, case management for us relates to communicating with the parents. In order for that to happen, our students need to sign a student release of information that Ms. Bogards or myself or any one of the facilitators, any one of the instructors can communicate with their parents and their options. Are you sharing information about my academics, my behavior, my attendance? Are we talking about financial aid? Are we talking about um, something else that's going on that might be a concern? So the students have a checklist and they can literally check what they accept us to share with their parents with or they don't. And our students are very vocal and we, we appreciate that, but we also tell them it's always good to have one person that's 100% your advocate on your side listening to the information. And we want to include your parents or your caregiver or a guardian or whoever it is you trust as part of that team. Part of that team is definitely vocational rehab because all our students are clients of vocational rehab. So we make sure that when they go to their VR counselors, they've signed authorization that we can speak to VR counselors and that VR counselors can contact us and share. And for most of our students, uh, Ms. Bogarts provides monthly reports to the VR consultants to make sure that they know the progress that our students are making, um, their OCP status, their hours, their attendance, anything that's impacting their progress is documented on that monthly report. I've mentioned a couple of time after school pro sessions or professional sessions. We call them our pros because we want them to learn that concept of being professional. We begin by debriefing with the students. How was your day? What went well? What didn't go well? What bothered you? Um, is there anything that's kind of pending and you want to clarify because we know how important communication is and we build everything around those career workforce skills, everything from time management, organization. Everyone has to develop a professional email address. It cannot be, I am the bomb artist, you know, 101. It has to be initial, last name, a Gmail. Um, our teachers communicate through email, send assignments through email, and really want to make the students familiar with the fact that your boss might not call you, but might send you something. So you are responsible for checking it in the evening or checking it in the morning, either getting an assignment or knowing what's going on. Something as simple as a reminder that um, a holiday is coming up and there's no classes or a test date was changed or an additional assignment that you're going to get credit for if you are checking your email in a timely manner the way that you're supposed to. That's something that we share with all three programs and, and we're very adamant about. One of the other things that we've done through the pro sessions um, after school is Skills USA. Very proud to say that our students have participated. If you're not familiar with Skills USA, we encourage you to take a look. The link is there um, on the name. And it's a national, international organization to provide um, development of skills to prepare youngsters for the workforce, our workforce. And I'll let you, I'll let you explore that or answer any questions at the end. Through the pro sessions, we also have access to software and computers and computers, whether it's in our classroom or tools and materials in the kitchen. Sometimes our students go home and do not have access to everything that they're accessing here. So that's additional time that they can use the Mac computers in the graphic design lab or any of the baking um, materials so that they can practice it again without the hustle and bustle of the class. And that's very important. Um, we've had the tutoring or for the pro sessions begin from year one, and it's something that we've continued. The um, popularity comes and goes depending if we're preparing for a competition, Skills USA, um, if we're working on projects and everyone has a due date, something you know along those lines. It's also a chance for students that really need more of that one-on-one -on -one time with one of us that to happen, and and that's a big thing for them. That one-on-one -on -one sometimes. What's the mindset? And it's really a complete mindset. The language um, of the first grant was for students, for us to have five to 10 students enrolled. Okay, obviously we, we met that box and we checked it really quickly. Um, the next was for students to at least earn one occupational completion point. And when I first started, I thought one completion point only, that's, you know, where are we setting the standard for our students? 
very, very proud to say that the majority of our students have earned the maximum of OCPs in the program that they're participating. And two students were able to come back and do commercial art and finish it, and then now are enrolled in 3D animation as a result of the scholarships being available to them. If that wouldn't have been available, the students would have not have been able to continue studying for financial reasons, um, because VR sometimes have has time sets on, on the hours that students are participating, um, or personal reasons you know, within a family that parents cannot continue to support something as basic as the transportation to the student or, or the fees. Um, so the scholarships for unique abilities really offer opportunities to our students that sometimes we don't consider. TOPS in our campus means complete faculty awareness. We've been asked to do full faculty presentations and many times we're asked, you know, working with students that have intellectual disabilities or autism spectrum disabilities, um, does the faculty become weary of that? Um, are they concerned about test scores or, or curriculum being watered down? Absolutely not. That has never happened to us and we're, we're proud of to say that. I think it's increased the faculty awareness that we have other students with other disabilities on campus that they, they had a feeling, they had the, the, the presence that something was going on, the students were trying to communicate, but our faculty always wants more information from us. So we have done several PD developments for the faculty, provide them anything from links to UDL, um, resources, websites, accommodations. To provide the overall knowledge. Um, really important thing. I think we're getting some feedback from someone. Um, we've also developed the Student Center at a technical site in a technical center in Miami-Dade. None of our technical colleges have a Student Center, don't have um, a center for students to be able to go and receive tutoring, um, receive speakers to come in and provide anything from job resume training to human resources to planning a budget and finance development. Uh, starting their own job, starting a small business. That's what the Student Center does for us. It is a computer lab with over 40 to 50 computers. Um, we have someone that's manning it from 12 o'clock to 5 o'clock, and that person is paid straight I see, I see, school, yeah. and it is something that is available um, for any student in the building. <laughs> Very important because it's it was a need that the students were talking about, and the administration coordinated with us and gain some input so that everything that's offered is a direct collaboration with um, Project TOPS. We've also done, like I said, um, invite the community speakers. We've done parent presentations on everything from guardianship to the services that, that TOPS provides to vocational rehab and career source and what are those services. And <laughs> who knows in our team that we welcome anyone from any different part of the state that wants to come and see us to take a tour and sí. learn more sí, about sí, it. Sí, when you do that, that means our, our time is really juggled and our students aren't receiving us 100% at that time. Sí, me, sí, so how does TOP shine um, at our campus and how has it been shining for the past um, five years? These are just some examples, and quite honestly, we weren't including this in the presentation, but um, our administration encouraged us to, um, to share. Um, I think neither one of us really boast about what our students do. Mm -hmm. We just celebrate their successes on an individual basis, but our students, students within the ASD spectrum, as well as students with intellectual disabilities, have full-time to part-time employment to do freelance work, both in baking as in graphic design, have earned full career programs, which means they are program completers and participate in the graduation. Robert Morgan has graduation once a year, usually that last week of July. We've participated in Skills USA, and Skills USA is divided in um, local competitions and at the county level, um, state competitions, and then, um, I'm sorry, local, regional, and then state, and then it goes to the national. And we have participated all the way to the national level. 
And that's been an incredible opportunity for a young man who had never gotten on an airplane before, let alone traveled without his parents and, mm -hmm. and went with our instructors. Um, we've received gold, silver, and bronze medals um, in the competitions of employment application process, just like it sounds like it's applying for a job. So you have to complete a job application accurately, neatly, have your resume, and you have to be able to interview with someone that you are not familiar with. That is a, com a competition that is open to students with a Section 504. The flip side to that is job interview, and that is a competition that is for any participant. It is not dependent on having a 504 or having a disability. So we had a, a student who won silver in employment application because he has a 504, a unique ability. And last year he participated in job interview without any special accommodations or supports and made it all the way to the state level, earning a silver medal again. That young man was beaming. He was beaming because he understood the difference. He understood there were more people in the competition. He understood that the questions were tougher. Um, he said they really, they were really more demanding. And, and I said, do you understand why? And he said, yes, because I was in a, in a playing field with everyone else. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly the best way to describe it. It was an even playing field, but it was the playing field. We also had a student um, our first two years participate in baking, and that is a timed baking competition. He thought he was walking into Food Network. He was not, um, but he did very well. He held his own and he won a bronze medal. We have freelance graphic design work on campus. Um, and we mentioned the fact that we have a high school as well as a technical college on campus. So the administration, the teachers are known for calling our graphic arts um, teacher Mr. Martin and saying, I need a flyer, I need a program for graduation, I need a program for awards, I need a sign this large to display on the outside of the school. Our students are doing those works and we consider that freelance work, um, unpaid internship work that Mr. Martin can monitor. They can include in their portfolio, they can include it as something that they've done. And the best part is that they have to meet with the client and have to communicate questions and concerns and I don't understand what you mean by that or you know very bluntly why do you want me to do that that would look horrible because many times their students are you know brutally honest and they need to learn how to communicate and be professional um, with the client not that the client is always right you have to guide the client because we're teaching them you know to take ownership in what they learned and apply it We've participated in community events. Um, baking and pastry has been asked two years in a row to participate in a community fundraising at one of our local churches. And the students bake um, chocolate mousses. First year was 500, second year was 600 chocolate mousses. And they also serve food that's donated from other restaurants. And that's an amazing experience because now they're, they've expanded their opportunities from one chef and Ms. Bogarts and myself on our team to um, over 400 people, I think yeah. was the last count we had, participated in this event. And you'll, you'll see a picture at the end. We, um, we do tours all the time, not only for, from people like yourselves from different programs across the state to visit us, but from schools, special needs schools locally to us. And it was really by accident. One day we said to one of our students, could you describe the program? What does Project Tops offer to you? Mm -hmm. And we weren't quite sure what we were gonna get, but both Ms. Bogarts and I were beyond floored. We started videotaping and taking pictures because it was like giving them an open mic and letting them just go. And they did, they did beautifully. They repeated things that we've said and weren't quite sure they understood or, or were listening. Um, they were caring towards the youngsters that were there, usually middle school, or students that are about to graduate, not looking for a program, not sure where to go. Um, so now we incorporate our students as leaders within these tours when we do school tours. And thanks to um, the center, they were invited, two of our students were invited to present as speakers at the First Institute. And that was an amazing experience that our, that our students still talk about. One of the most tangible um, documents that we can share with you is this visually um, for the students enrolled in commercial art and 3D animation. 
um, industry certification is something that is recognized in the industry. And what that means is this is not Robert Morgan certificate. This is not from Mr. Martin. This is not based on tops. Mm -hmm. This is Adobe certified. If you're familiar with Adobe Photoshop or Illustrator or Flash, Adobe has the market really covered on many of these graphic design programs. So our students participate in Adobe certified associate ACA. And this is a listing of how many of our students have participated in the exam April 2019 and most recently December 2019. The passing score is 700 and you will see that our students we have listed here non-top students so students that are not top students students that do not have a disability are in blue and students in that orangey color are top students and look at the scores how competitive they are across the board. And the third student, um, P. Gabriel, is a top student and is a student on Unique Ability Scholarship. And he earned a score of 760. And it could have been a thousand for all he was concerned. The grin was from ear to ear. The pride that he had. And the first thing he said was, Miss, we put that on my resume, right? I want that on my resume. And I said, absolutely. So not only is it on his resume, um, he has a certificate that is downloaded directly from Adobe and there his name goes on the Adobe website. So anyone looking for freelance work in this area can see Gabriel P, his full name, his contact information as someone who has earned an Adobe license in his area of interest. That is a young man who has done commercial art and is now doing 3D animation. So if you think we're proud, we're just, you know, a little proud. And here are some of our young adults. These are shots of our students in baking and pastry arts. Some of these students have done both paste, uh, baking as well as culinary. Um, the picture on the upper right that has Giorgio's Cafe in the background on the wall, that is our in-house cafe for adult students. It is also the place where our district holds many events from um, school board members, scholarship luncheons to honor roll luncheons, to trainings for daycare workers, speech and language therapists. So our students are serving at any one time, breakfast or lunch, anywhere from 200 to 300 people. That's a one angle. So you see it, it, it gets kind of crowded. Mm -hmm. Our students do serving buffet style, but they have to be dressed appropriately, neatly, um, know how to interact with the customer that's coming and asking, know how to say no, everyone has to have you know, one pass by the line, not two, no, I can't give you, no, I'm so sorry. And all with a smile and professionally. Behind the scenes in the kitchen, you see the center picture. And then um, the picture with the chef holding a certificate in his hand um, is a group of students, students with and without um, disabilities who came to that community event that I was talking to you about. Now these are pictures of commercial art technology and 3D animation. You see the young man holding his ACA I pass. That's the certificate. Uh, that's I'm sorry. That's not the certificate. That's the certificate we made in house. Mm -hmm. um, but it's what what when they walked into the room, they had it. Let me add that we applied and became um, Pearson View certified, so we can administer exams that are industry certifications from Pearson or Certiport on campus. If not, our students would have to go to a test site that's 30 to 45 minutes away um, or go to one of the co colleges. And I always tell them you lose home court advantage because now you're waiting about how you get there, parking, finding the right building, forgetting your ID, not knowing where you're going. So our administration was, again, beyond supportive, allowed us to go through this. This benefits students with and without disabilities. Anyone can use it. The test coordinator for the technical colleges is the one that administers the exam. It's computer-based, um, follows the procedure, but we have the advantage that our students can tour the facility when it's empty, know where it's located in the building, go through verifying their IDs to make sure that it's current. They must have a valid uh, license or Florida State ID. Two of our students had it lapsed and never realized it until we went through one of our 
tours before um, a testing. So it was like, oh, but I have it. Yes, but notice the date, it expired. It expired, it's not good. If that would have been the test date, you would have had to leave. So that was an eye-opening experience for them. Um, that's the classroom in the middle for commercial art in 3D without the students. Um, and you see shots of the class with some of the students doing um, individual work. Everyone is assigned one computer per student and small group instruction. Sometimes when it's one skill that we see, it's a skill that's, that's difficult for them. I think two more pictures. Nope, whoops, hold on. Mm -hmm. There we go. Time for questions and comments and I stopped talking, um, but a couple more of our students there. Most of our team on the corner left including Ms. Bogards, Ms. Prasad, um, Ms. Bogards, Chef Starvaji, Mr. Martin, Ms. Rodriguez-Walling, and myself. And um, to the far right, a picture of our campus in the mall area. We are a much older building um, that started in the 70s. Um, it's going through different phases of renovation, um, but we're quite proud of what we do for our students, encouraging our young adults. We have 24 students registered in the program now five of them on scholarship, and we have a waiting list um, because the demand, as I'm sure you all recognize, is so high within our, our communities and across the state. And if you have any questions or comments, we will be happy to hear them now. I'm gonna stop sharing and be able to read any comments on chat. And that's my email information for anyone who's interested in contacting me. Thank you everyone um, for listening and thank you, Drew, for this opportunity. Thank you, Vivian. At this time, if anyone has a question, um, if you'll just simply move your cursor over the window with your name in it, and you can go up to the top right and click unmute, and that will unmute you if you would like to ask the question. If you would like to write the question, you can go down to the bottom of the screen to where the chat icon is and click on that. and. I when you click on that, a chat window will open and you can type your question in there if you have a question there that you would like to ask. This has been a lot of amazing information. Vivian, that was so, um, so clear the way that you explained that. Thank you for sharing. We're gonna wait just a few minutes. We're, um, we're going to be putting up um, an evaluation link and if you would not mind clicking that link at the end of the webinar so that you can give us feedback on this webinar and topics that you would like to see us um, share information on in the future. We'll also um, post the slides again for anyone who joined late because one, um, one of the issues with Zoom, if you join after something is posted in the chat box, you can't see it, so there are the slides again if you would like to download the slides. Here we go, here's a question, Vivian. The students that have intellectual disabilities, what types of classes are they coming from in the public school system? We have an array of, of students. Um, some are coming from self-contained classes for students with intellectual disabilities. Some are not. Um, some are coming from inclusion or mainstream classes. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of students from private schools, schools private schools um, with smaller programs that come in. We've had at least three students off the top of my head that had one-on-one -on -one paraprofessionals through the, through the public school system. Um, so those students are used to a really higher level of support and they come here and they don't have it. That's the first thing we say. Um, are there any modifications? There are no modifications, there are accommodations. Because our students, the goal is for our student to be able to earn the OCP that's from um, Florida DOE. And another question, are there any modifications for students with intellectual disabilities? No, we're accommodating, we're not modifying. And, and there, I, I will say that at times, you know, when we accept a student, you accept a student and you always have some trepidation um, in terms of, is this a right match? And what we do is we make sure 
that we monitor that studi student very closely and that the student understands you know, what their responsibilities are gonna be. I think those first two trimesters are all about the transition and understanding that we're raising the bar and we're taking that chance that we believe the student can do it. And if we can't, then we're providing that additional support. We do have students, um, I'm reading the question, Drew, that have earned standard diplomas. The majority that have intellectual disabilities have come from access points. Some came from what used to be um, in Dade County, the special diploma, um, because they're older students. There weren't students who mm -hmm. had just graduated. We've had students who have been out of school for one or two years um, and have been at home. We've had students who have gone to Miami-Dade College and have registered with the Access Center um, or have done um, the community ed classes and haven't been successful because they needed more one-on-one -on -one support, um, not just somebody that they could go and check in with. Um, that's the one thing that is very different. We don't, our students don't come to us. We, we are there on a daily basis in both programs for them. Thank you. Okay, we're going to, again, remember that the evaluation is in the chat box. And if you could click on that evaluation and give us feedback on the webinar today, as well as information for future webinars. Are there other questions? Okay, Drew, I'm rereading re the question. It wasn't what diplomas are students coming with. It's do the students need to have a standard or access points? Either one, they're welcome. Mm -hmm. Okay. I read it incorrectly. Okay. Got too many things going on in the screen, sorry. Thank you, Vivian, thank you. Right, no, we're not. Okay, we're just waiting to see if anyone else has a question. I would like to thank all of you for taking the time today to join us to find out more about the Florida Post-Secondary Comprehensive Transition Program at um, Robert Morgan Technical College, um, Project TOPS, and the other components of Project TOPS. I've visited and I can tell you it's a wonderful program to see as students are really um, learning skills that are going to increase their, um, the possibilities for employment whenever they, whenever they leave Robert Morgan Technical College. Okay, well, if there are no other questions, again, thank you all for joining us today. Thank you to our presenter, Dr. Vivian Vieta, um, and to Robert Morgan Educational Center and Technical College for sharing information today. And we'll be sending out information on our March webinar shortly. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Drew. Have a good afternoon. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. Bye. -bye. Bye.